Hi there, after understanding the ingredients of a mathematical model, let us sh shed some light on logic in our mathematical economics. There are a few aspects of it out of which we are studying these three that is propositions, implications and then necessary and sufficient conditions. Now let us start with the main thing that is logic. Logic from uh, uh, the Latin origin as it says it is the art of reason. So how we reason, how we explain an argument is the uh, process of making some logic. Now in mathematical reasoning we do the process of uh, logic and let us see how we do this. And for that there are two ingredients and these two ingredients are propositions and implications. Primarily we have propositions. The etymology of it is proponere that is to propose or to propound. It means that we are trying to make a statement here, trying to express something, trying to assert something. It can be either true or false, uh, either of the possibilities can be there. So when there is a true proposition for example, we can say that all individuals who breathe are alive. Yes, it is a true proposition. But a false proposition would be, which can be false, is that all individuals who breathe are healthy. Yes, it, it cannot be considered as true because in some cases it will be false. In addition to a false proposition and a true proposition, there can be imprecise proposition and it definitely becomes a hindrance in developing logic. For example, if I say that 67 is a large number, then I have to explain that what is a large number. And by that definition, I can be able to defend if 67 is actually a large number or not. For example, if I say a large number has 7 digits in it, then definitely 67 is not a large number. So, if I write this proposition, I have to explain beside it that what is a large number. Now mathematics gives us precise results by using algebra, matrices and calculus etc. So mathematical economics helps us to develop clear propositions and hence better logic. So we are not doubtful about mathematical economics when it uses propositions because it is basically a precise science and it allows us to explain the situation in a clear way by using clear and true propositions. The other part of the logic is implications and these implications are basically the concatenation of the propositions in a logical reasoning and it is represented with the help of this implication arrow. It can be better understood with the help of this hypothetical example. We assume that P and Q are two propositions and if P is true then Q will always be true. So if we make this uh, couple of propositions in this way that they are connected and they have a certain relationship or a consequence then we have an implication and there is an implication of P for Q. We use this arrow for it as we can see if P is true then Q is true. In other words, P implies Q or if P then Q or Q is a consequence of P. So these are three ways in which I can read this implication that has two propositions in it that is P and Q. There can be further examples of implications. For example, if X is greater than 2, then its square will be greater than 4. For example, if X is 3, then its square will be 9, so it is greater than 4. If X is 4, its square will be equal to 16, so it is following this implication. And if the product of X and Y is 0, then either X is 0 or Y is 0 or both are 0. So you see this proposition again is a, a couple of proposition and this implication will be verified. And if x is a square, then x is also a rectangle. A square has all sides equal, all four of them. And if the, it is a square, definitely it fulfills the requirement of a rectangle. 
because both of them have four sides where square has a more restricted definition of having all the sides equal whereas rectangle can be any square uh, that might have equal uh, sides or if it is not a square it would be a rectangle for sure that has unequal sides now what is a logical equivalence it is a step ahead of implication simply speaking it has a bicausal sort of phenomenon that is if x and y their product is zero then either of them or both of them are zero that is x and y but in this logical equivalence reverse will also be true that is if either x and y are zero the product will also be equal to zero so you see the process is reversed when this reverse causality exists then we call it a logical equivalence and it is a kind of dual implication that is from left to right and from right to left and its symbol is this logical equivalence arrow it is known as the equivalence arrow to be more specific and here you can see x y the product is zero and the equivalence arrow is there and then we have this it means that left hand side will lead to right hand side and the right hand side will lead to left hand side and now uh, we can also write in this way where the propositions are written a logical logically equivalent to b in other words we can call it a is equivalent to b now based upon this we have necessary and sufficient conditions we study this in economics uh, many times for example we study this when it comes to the profit maximization that is the equality of mc and mr we will come to this just in a while primarily let us uh, set the stage for this from the mathematical point of view so in mathematical economics we have logical equivalence to show that these conditions they exist in a concise way and we explain them in a very precise manner and with less effort when we have a logical equivalence we have the phenomenon of necessary and sufficient condition between a and b so the thing that we have been using in economics as necessary and sufficient conditions it can be written mathematically like this with the help of a logical equivalence and with this with the help of this symbol now let us take the example of it from the economic theory here you can see that example that i just talked about the profit maximization of a firm here we have output on x axis and cost on y axis and the price level as well this is the marginal revenue and this is the cost of uh, the curve of marginal cost these are the two points of intersection this is where the profit is maximized as we have studied in the economic theory now from the logical equivalence we can see that if mc is cutting mr from below which happens at this point the profit will be maximized as we have studied in the theory now i can write it in a logical equivalence uh, equivalence manner that if mc is cutting mr from below it means that the profit will be maximized but on the contrary profit will be maximized if mc is cutting mr from below so this is a kind of logical equivalence situation in which by causality exists or the reverse holds true and there is no doubt about it because once the profit is maximized definitely it was the equality of mc and mr that was making it happen so um, mc M mr means that mc is uh, mc cuts mr from below means that mc is equal to mr definitely if it has to cut the other line it has to be equal at that point so this is an implication here from below means that the slopes they are different from each other as we can see here hence logical equivalence explains the phenomenon concisely all of it has been explained with the help of logical equivalence which is in this expression and we have tried to explain the necessary and sufficient condition this is the sufficient condition and this is the necessary condition from the economic theory that we have tried to explain with the help of necessary and, uh, with the help of logical equivalence and in the background of which we had implications 
and we had propositions and basically broadly speaking we were talking about logic so the logic has been explained in this video thank you